Contention. Critique. Conjecture. Conclusion. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Shop online anytime. They're open 24-7. It is 26 this evening's huddle, Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater, and a very good evening to you both. Hello. Good evening. All right, let's start with this messy, messy, messy Labour stuff. Why on earth, Josie, did Cunliffe, when asked, just say, yes, I support him for now? Well, exactly. You've really got two choices. Either you come out and you say, I'm, I'm challenging the leader, uh, and you're upfront about that, or you say, I am endorsing the leader 100%, and you don't try and say, for now, mm. or... Um, you know, qualify it. And that's that's the mistake he made. I think he's overplayed his hand for that reason, that people just think, look, if you're going to do it, you've got a right to challenge the leadership. Absolutely. But go ahead and challenge it. Uh, and instead, he's going to he's created this this uh, hiatus where everybody's going to be second-guessing until, until February. And I tell you, it's heartbreaking as a Labour supporter <laughs> to sit there in a slow news week again <laughs> and watch the party melting down in the public glare. I mean, this conference, we're not talking about the substance of the speech we're not talking about any policy we're just talking about how did this train wreck of a conference happen Cameron how much damage has Cunliffe done to himself and how much to the party I think uh, he's done a huge amount of damage to the party if not him then certainly his loyal band of hardcore activists who basically mounted uh, a coup on his behalf uh, during the week Um, which they bottled, by the way, and and this is why I wrote a post earlier today saying that they disgust me, the Labour Party, because they can't even have a proper blood and guts coup without bottling it and getting all squeamish about the whole whole thing. Yeah, I was just thinking, the one person or the one group of people I blame for this is, is the party leadership itself, because the whole point about party conferences, no matter which party it is, these are very... They're stage managed, exactly. I mean, you look at the American conferences and stuff like that. You know, you anticipate the problems, you plan the the balloons, you manage the conflict, and they drop the ball. How do you manage this, though? How do you manage a guy who who essentially went rogue on you? Well, Well, what you don't do is follow the play card of of Bill English and, and others, where you now say that you're going to discipline this person, you're going to deal with them, you're going to smack them up, you're going to do all of these sorts of things. All David Shearer has done is paint himself into a corner and he's used his own brush and his own paint. And he's got a situation now where if he doesn't deal with David Cunliffe, he's damned as being weak and vacillating. If he does deal with David Cunliffe, then the conference was a very clear uh, indication that the party uh, organism, for want of a better term, uh, is not happy with the way that the parliamentary wing is operating. But I think what we saw, though, we saw David Shearer show a bit of mongrel this weekend, which which is good for him. We saw the man who stared down the militia with the AK-47 oh, pointing at his wife. You know, no, he did. He sounded no, he different. He, he had a bit of backbone. And I think what he's got to be careful here is not to turn Cun- David Cunliffe into a martyr. You know, he can't humiliate him, but he does have to do something. You've got to send like him to the back benches, though, don't you? You've got to send him off to the back benches. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think you've got to show some, some strength. And that cuts some oxygen off for him, Cameron, too, doesn't it? Because if he sits out, out the back for three months and doesn't get much news media, that, you know, that cuts him off a no, bit, look, too. We're heading into the barbecue season metaphorically and physically for the Labour Party. It's all going to go quiet after another couple of weeks in Parliament. They're going to have a hiatus over, over Christmas. I they're think we'll be in rehab. After, you know, <laughs> they're going to come back after summer. The polls aren't going to show uh, any, any uh, improvement for Labour. In fact, if I was a, a pollster now, I'd be in the field and, and gauging just how much, how damaging this has been to Labour, and I'm predicting probably three or four All right, we'll ta- five we'll t- points. I can, I can hear a breath there, Josie. Hold, hold that breath, hold that thought. We'll come back in just a moment more on the Labour leadership spill with Josie Pigani and Cameron Slater, 16 to 6. It's Susan Wood on Larry Williams Drive with the business banking specialists at Westpac. 13 to 6, the huddle this evening, Josie Bagani and Cameron Slater. And I hope you held that breath for me in that thought, Josie, because what I did want to get out of you, <laughs> David Shearer, heard him talk to Mike Hosking this morning. It was a different interview. He got a sentence out. He made sense. 
he did a great speech at that conference yesterday. Is he starting to show some leadership chops? Well, I think what, what you said earlier, Susan, is spot on, that he needs to believe in himself. He needs to uh, start trusting his own instincts. He got into Parliament and he wanted the leadership for one reason, which was to turn the country around, to create jobs, to, to create a whole new economic um, vision for New Zealand. Now, if, if he can, if he can um, somehow locate that and, and, um, and, and really communicate that to the public of New Zealand, he'll be, he'll be fine. But the problem he's got now is that there's been a massive shift of power away from the caucus, away from MPs, to the party. Now, that's a good thing for democracy. Party wow. members can have a say on the leader, they can have a say on policy. Pretty messy, though. Time, he's going to have to keep the party happy, uh, which is a you know ever-dwindling membership and a narrower and narrower base. He's going to have to also appeal to the public, and I think that's going to be a hard juggling act. The party, the public, and the unions can. Well, I mean, that, that's the, the joke of it. Basically, the Labour Party has ceded 20% of the choice of the of the leader to the unions, but I mean the the bigger joke though is that all all in the lead, lead up to the conference last week, you had the the base baying for Shearer's blood. Uh, all during Saturday, we had this massive, uh, you know, from what I'm told from the insiders that were in inside the actual room, in there it was pretty intense blood and guts everywhere, uh, a leadership argument without a leadership battle. And they're again wanting to eviscerate uh, David Shearer. Then he delivers one speech, and all of a sudden they're all sick of fence again. I mean, honestly, one speech and then a good interview the next morning does not make a leader. So, and John Key's absolutely right. If they can't organise a conference, then they sure, surely can't organise the country. All right, quick subject change here. Josie Tertiary, Education Minister Stephen, Stephen Joyce, is giving Auckland University extra money. He says spend it on engineering and science. Uh, the Tertiary Education Union says no, that's, that's against academic freedom. They should be able oh, to spend no. it on what they will, Josie. Well, the irony here is that it was Michael Cullen who initiated this approach and, and tried to push the universities into, for example, specialising, uh, I don't know, if you're in the Hawke's Bay, specialise in food and wine, uh, let's have one world-class engineering school, let's have one world-class Well, he's got a point. We've got a lot of universities in this country spread up and down, all competing against each exactly. other. Exactly. nuts, and I think. When now. Michael Cullen did it, uh, Stephen Joyce was the first to turn around and call him a nanny stater, telling students what they want to study. So, I, I mean, I actually think this kind of intervention from government is a good but thing. the government's it's paying. Risky. The government's yeah. if the government's paying for it, Cam, surely they can say what the money's spent on. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, and look, I think we need to do something really drastic in our tertiary sector. We can't keep funding willy nilly people doing pathetic, hopeless degrees like like a bugger all or anything like that. Your basket weaving and basket courses. Weaving. What we've got to do is we've got to fund people into. If you want to be an engineer, we'll fund you. And we're going to lock you in and you're going to stay here and you're going to work on those sorts of things, but you'll have your education paper. If you want to do a, a Bachelor of Arts and study politics or other useless subjects like that... Oh, come on, we love politics. We love politicians. We do, but you, know, you don't need to go to university to study politics. <laughs> it opens your mind. You end up in the Labour Party. It opens your mind. All right, we're going to leave it there, Josie Bagani and Cameron Slater. It is now nine before uh, six o'clock.